So the question I get a lot of times is, when do I, when do I give a 14 day free trial? How much should I charge? Can you close without, um, can you close without doing a sales call? Can you close without doing yada, yada, yada? You're only limited by your own creativity and your ability to sell to people. However, there is a chronological order that I've observed that I think is right. Meaning it was this way for me. And it was this way for a lot of people that I know who have successful businesses. But I don't want to say this is the only thing because then that will limit your ability to create your own offers. You just have to test. Okay. My own experience has taught me that when you're learning a, an audience, a person that you're going to sell to, the thing that you have to do, the thing you have to start with is selling one-to-one, okay? If I'm trying to sell something, I need to sell. When I was trying to sell Upex, I, the people who saw it, I would call them and say, what was it about Upex that you liked? What was it, what is it that you don't like? What is it that you wanted to do? What is it? And I would pry into that thing. I would get to know them as much as possible. And the word, and them got more specific as I would go. I'd be like, you know, I really don't want to talk to a person who is like this because that. So I would always start selling one-on-one. I would then move to selling through a VSL. And then the VSL would be like, hey, the reason I'm doing the VSL is because I want a lot of at-bats to sell to people with a script. And I could take my script which I just laid out the framework for my script last week. If you didn't see that, it's a YouTube video on my sales script. But I would customize that sales script to that one person. Okay. Once I'd done that enough, then I go to the webinar. That's how I have done it. And I have done it that way because if you were to say, hey, I mean, Alex, it's nice for Alex and I to say, hey, we can sell webinars. But if I were to tell one of you guys to go sell to a webinar, the biggest mistake you're going to come out of the gate with, even if we showed you the entire framework, what to do here, what to do here, what to do, what to do here. If you try and sell to a whole bunch of people, it's not going to work anyway. I'd say a, a quick hack. Sorry to interject. Sam. Yeah, no, jump in. A, a quick hack for me is um, I, I always do demos, right? Some people do phone calls or some people do face-to-face uh, zooms, which is good, right? Because there's that trust factor. The other thing is you can pay attention to that person's reactions based off of what you say and learn from that. Ooh, this person likes when I say this, people generally like when I say this, so you can see their facial expressions, but here's what a lot of people don't realize. Okay. There's three types of learners. There's visual learners, auditory learners, and I think it's kinesthetic or calisthetic or whatever. So mainly though, people are either visual learners or auditory learners. So a demo addresses both. I love demos because if you're not doing a demo, you're essentially losing 50% of your deals because that's 50% of your audience, right? Half of these people are visual learners. So if you're getting on a sales call and you're just doing a Zoom like this, they're not going to be able to retain the information. It's much better to do a demo because you're addressing both visual learners and auditory learners, right? And you know you can get into the you know, uh, uh, details of, of, of introductions and things like that. For example, like, you know, uh, natural ability, like natural conversations for somebody are, are basically like, Hey, how are you? Right. And what, what's your, what's your response to how are you? Good, good. You, good. you, right. <laughs> so here's what happens to your, to your potential client when you say that, right. When he answers good, you subconsciously, he thinks, Oh shit, this conversation is really easy. I don't even have to think to have this conversation and they go subconsciously in autopilot instead of asking, how are you at the beginning of the call? I go, and it's so funny because you see the look on their face. I go, what have you been up to today? Like, what have you been up to today, man? And they're just like, kind of like thrown back a little bit. And then, but they have to actually think about what they did today and give me a multiple word response, which gets them engaged in the conversation immediately. Right. It doesn't put them, it doesn't lull them to sleep with, how are you? Good. You, you don't even have to think about it. Right. But if you induce a multiple word answer, it gets them engaged at the beginning of the call. And now they're paying attention. So this is how you start a demo call. That's what you're saying, Alex. I always start a demo call, you yeah. know, and, and it's so funny with my sales guys, the first correction I make, cause everybody's like, how are you? What's up, man? How, how you doing? Good. You, 
good. You know, like, like it, literally subconsciously they're thinking, oh my God, I've had this conversation a million times. I don't even have to freaking think. So have this conversation. What? I really like that. You know what I do? I do this every time too. As soon as I get them on, I say, hey man, or hey lady. <laughs> I guess I don't, I probably don't say, hey lady. I probably say, hey Sally, I really appreciate you setting up this time to talk with me. Before we jump into it, I noticed on your website that you guys do a lot of bump. And I, so I first call out the fact that she set up this time with me. I'm taking out my time to talk to her. Right. But then I show an interest in her. Like I, I looked at your website. I saw you guys are doing this. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think if you were, again, I think a lot of times we put, we put like this box. Okay. Well, I have to say, what have you been up to? Dude, I like that, by the way. I love that. That's like an easy hack for any of you guys just to, yeah. again, and by the way, who's in control of a conversation? The person asking questions. Right, right. So at the beginning, you want to ask those those qualifying questions. So what I like exactly. to do, is I'll, I'll say, you know, how long have you been in the business? They'll tell me, I'll say, well, I'll get right down to it. So how many deals are you doing a month right now? Yes. And then they'll let me know how many deals they're doing a month. And then I'll say, how many would you like to be doing within the next 90 days? And this is important because now you know where they are and you know where they want to get to. Right. And what I like to do is when they say, uh, let's say if they're like, oh, you know, I, I, I want to be doing 10 deals, right? So uh, that's great. So, so you've been doing, you said you were doing six deals a month. How long have you consistently been doing six deals a month? And they'll say something like, I don't know, man, like five months, six months. And you just go, wow, you know, that's, that's a long time. You know, what's, what, you know, it seems like you were pretty comfortable there if you were doing six deals a month for six months long you know, what switched for you? Like what changed that you want to, you know, get more deals? Like what was that switch for you? And then they have to think about their why, right? Like, oh, my daughter's and my daughter needs to go to college. She, she's going to be graduate. And you get their why, which is very powerful because you're going to use that later on in the sale, right? So getting what they're doing now, where they want to go, and then how long have they been, have they had this pain, Right. And then you say, that is, that's a long time, you know, and, and it seems like you were pretty happy doing it because you did it for six months. What, what switched for you, right? What, what changed to make you take action and have you on this call with me and yeah. you get there. Why? And all this information you're gathering to use later on in the call to not use against them, but, but it's just more tools for your arsenal. To use set. for them, to use for them, right? If right. you, if you are ethical in selling, you're always helping them always. But if you're trying to sell everybody, you're just trying to make a buck and you know that you can't really help them, then shame on you. But I'll say this. So it's funny because my, I had a mentor back in the day, super, this guy is just, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy worker, but super, I mean, loaded millionaire, all that kind of stuff. He taught me this thing called maximizers. Have you ever heard of a maximizer, Alex? All right. Yeah. So it's kind of what you were doing. He said, whenever you're talking, the, the, the first chunk of your sales call is the qualifying. That's when you're getting into the frame of reselling that person. Say, hey, you are currently are bought into this way of thinking. You've been doing it this way. This is the wrong way. He goes, you can't reposition what you do. You can't get them to convert if you don't call them out. And now it's not like being mean to them or anything, but it's, it's also not glossing over whatever it is. So I, I say to Alex, I'm like, all right, Alex, uh, how many deals a month do you do? Six. Six. How many, how many do you want to do? 10. Okay. Why aren't you doing 10? Right. What's your biggest challenge? What, what do you think your biggest challenge is from getting you to six to 10? Or, or in, instead of saying six, say one or two. One or two. That's not good. Right. <laughs> so right. He says things like, that's not normal, or that's not good. The whole point is, if they, if they have something to where it's like, they themselves, we as people. It's like a doctor diagnosing you with sickness. Yeah, well, it's like, that's not good. If, yeah. if you say, it, okay, so look, let's do it another way. All right, tell me one or two again. One or two. Okay, and then how many deals do you want to be doing? Ten. Okay. I totally glossed over like 
I, I didn't call him out at all. I totally glossed over, which means I'm apathetic to what he's doing, which means I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Because in my world, one to two, that's not good. I love that. No, I, I definitely love that. And when you said that to me, like I'm putting myself in position of the, the client, my heart kind of sank like, oh, you have you know, a really bad case of appendicitis or something like that. Is, like, yeah, ah, I need to fix it. Exactly. Right. So here, here's the, I mean, this is like a double-edged sword. When people hear about maximizing a response, they become hesitant because uh, he calls it a high level of confront. Now I have a high level of confront naturally. I can say anything to anybody and it doesn't bother me, but the little I, lo I know Lori she hasn't got that, I don't think, right? However, did you hear what I said, Lori? It was a compliment. Uh, it was a compliment. I, I, I Meaning, I think some people don't want to take this position with people because they feel like it's aggressive, but it really is not. And it's something that you can practice. And it's something that you should do if you want to help people, right? And we can say, we can say, hey, want to close more deals, want to close more sales, yada, whatever. That's fine. Making money is a good thing. Making money is a good thing. But the ability to communicate is the only tool you have to do that, right? And this is a tool. So I like your, your way of doing asking them why, because by the way, why and how and what are really good ways to start a question. Because if you ask a question on what and how, like, what are you going to do to fix this? How, how have you planned on fixing this? You make them solve the problem. Right. Okay. So again, when you're asking questions, remember, I got to start th this with what and how, because it'll make them solve their own problems. And when they come up short, I'll show them how to fill in the blanks.